Hello guys and welcome to the wonderful land of QuickBooks Made Easy. It is December of 2016 and it is time to cover something that I know all of you will have to be dealing with and all of you love and that is 1099s. So if you don't know, QuickBooks Made Easy is an email newsletter uh, that comes with a little video embedded. You can get it once a month. So if you found this video on YouTube and you want to sign up for the newsletter, there'll be a little email, a little address or something at the end that'll show you where to go to sign up for it. But you can go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com to sign up for it. Anyway, I'm Greg Bosson and are you ready? We're going to talk about how to do 1099s. Now, we could spend about a half hour on it, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you a nice little overview. If you have any more questions, you can call us. I'm also going to tell you how to do this in the desktop, but then I know some of you have the online edition, so at the end, we'll show you where to go in the online edition because you can get 1099s out of the online edition as well as out of the desktop of QuickBooks. So you can print them, you can email them uh, directly out of uh, both the online edition and the desktop. The other question people have is uh, if you haven't set your books up to do 1099s, is it too late to do that now and be able to get 1099s for the year of 2016 even though the year is almost over? No, it's not too late. You can do it now. You can do it at the end of the year. You can do the setup in 2017, right before you print the 1099s for 2016. Okay, so um, you can do this after the fact. So don't worry about that. So um, I will show you that there is in QuickBooks. Let me see if it's under vendors. You see this thing that says print e-file 1099s. There's a little 1099 wizard uh, that you could conceivably walk through after the fact. And if you walk through this, it'll guide you through the process of what I'm going to show you to do manually but I think it'll make it easier for you to understand if I just show you how to do it manually but here's where you can just simply walk through the process okay the first step isn't even listed here and that is that you need to turn on the feature so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here to turn on the 1099 feature and again you can do it after the fact you go to edit you go to preferences and then these are all your preferences, little features you can turn on or off. You scroll down to the bottom and the one that says tax 1099, you click on it. You click on company preference. Do you file? You say yes. Don't say no. You got to say yes. Okay. Now I bet you you uh, probably figured that you needed to do that. So once you do that, I'll click OK awesome then there I'm going to tell you there are basically two main steps that you need to go through here and let me go back under vendors and I'm just going to pull up this little wizard um, now looks like there's six steps but there's really two main things that you need to do the first thing is you need to tell QuickBooks which vendors should get a 1099 so basically if you want to get a 1099 out of QuickBooks those names need to be on the vendor list uh, and you need to mark them as 1099 eligible and you can do it here in the wizard or you can do it manually and I'll show you how to do it manually in a second and then the second main thing you really need to do is number three map your accounts which means you tell QuickBooks which expense accounts on your P&L are expense accounts that are 1099 related in other words contract labor expense well that should go on a 1099 because labor is something that goes on 1099s materials expense office supplies expense that is not an expense that should go on a 1099 so you got to do both of those things you got to tell quickbooks which vendors should get a 1099 and which expense accounts are the type of accounts where the dollars from those accounts should appear on a 1099 okay let's do the vendors first so i'm going to go to the vendors right here here's the vendors and uh, I actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to skip to the very end uh, and show you something. I'm going to start with a report. I'm going to go to reports. I'm going to go to vendors. And I'm going to go to 1099 summary. This is a report that you'll be able to pull up before you even set anything up here. Okay, once you turn the feature on, you'll have access to this report. But what the report does is it basically tells us who's going to get a 1099 when you go to print out of QuickBooks. And right now, nobody's getting a 1099, okay? So what I want to do is I want to show you how when you tell QuickBooks which vendors are 1099 vendors, then you'll see that they'll appear on this report. So let me just show you. I am going to go to Alex Thomas. So I'm going to double-click on Alex Thomas. Now, 
even though that person perhaps should get a 1099, it's not going to be given a 1099 until you go to the tax settings and you mark them as eligible. You check this box, you put their social security number or their federal ID number, but once you check that box, you put in their ID number, then they should appear on the report that I just popped up. Here it is. Uh, notice they're still not here, and I'll get to why in a second. But uh, just wanted to show you, got to mark the vendors as eligible, got to put an ID number. The other thing you want to do is you want to go to the address info and make sure that there is an address listed for these people right here. I usually force the person to give me their social security number and their address before I even give them the first check. That way I make sure that I have their information at the end of the year when I'm ready to give them a 1099 because if they've skipped out and they won't give me their social because they don't want me to get a 1099, you know, that's kind of a problem. So just a little suggestion. That's the first step. So Alex Thomas, as you can tell, uh, well, I'll double click on it again. You can see he's eligible. We've got his ID number, but yet for whatever reason, for some reason, he's not appearing here. The reason why he's not appearing here, is it because we don't have any transactions to them? Yeah. For 2019, we entered a bill for 1000 and we paid 900 So we have expenses. They're more than $600. Why is it not showing on this report and not going to be printed on a 1099? The reason why is because of the second thing that you got to do. You have to tell QuickBooks which expense accounts are 1099 eligible. Okay, so to do that, I think I'll just go to my little uh, wizard here and show you where to go to do that. 1099 wizard and go ahead and click get started. Here's where it basically just gives us a list of our, our vendors and rather than checking them off individually, we can just go through and check them off here. Now go to the little next step. This is where you make sure you have information like the ID numbers for all of your 1099s. This is where you tell QuickBooks which expense accounts are expense accounts for labor because those are the ones that should be on the 1099. Right now, uh, I'm going to tell it to show all accounts. So it's going to show all expense accounts and cost of goods sold accounts and equity accounts. I think it shows all accounts actually except bank accounts. And any account that you feel like is a labor account should be here. So contract labor that's where the person's check went to this particular vendor alex thomas uh, you can't see the account here but i'm just going to tell you alex thomas's checks went to contract labor that's a 1099 account but yet it's saying here omit these payments from 1099s so i'm going to go ahead and click this by putting a box here not only are you telling them that it should go on a 1099 but you're telling them which box of the 1099 it should go on and it should go on box seven non-employee compensation. That's basically where you put almost all of your contract labor. Anybody who's getting a 1099 pretty much goes in box seven. If it's another box, that's something that's really kind of unusual when you want to talk to your accountant. But just go ahead and put everybody to non-employee compensation unless you have something unusual. So I'm going to go ahead and click that there. And I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of the steps here. And actually, I'll just escape out of here. So now I'm going to refresh the report and now you see the $900 is appearing. So one thing I wanted to show too, we entered a bill to this person for a thousand, but we only paid 900. That's the amount that goes on the 1099, amounts that the vendor was paid, not what was billed, but what was paid. That's the only thing that goes on the 1099. So that's really the whole ball of wax here. Those are the two things you gotta do. Now I'm gonna point out one other thing and then we'll finish up. Uh, let's go to Barney's Drywall. So Barney's Drywall, that's somebody that we know should get a 1099. And really what you should do is go through your vendor list determining who you think should get a 1099 and who you shouldn't. And again, uh, you make that decision. And once you make the decision, you go over here and you mark them as eligible and you put their number here. Now, just to give you a little hint, individuals and sole proprietorship should get a 1099 if you're paying money to a corporation an ink they don't get 1099s okay when in doubt just give them a 1099 it's safer than not okay so we've marked that person what i wanted to show you here is here we have two checks 
we paid the person a thousand dollars 900 of it went to contract labor 100 went to reimburse them for equipment rental what should be on the 1099 not the hundred only the 900 okay so don't forget that and then we wrote them a second check here that all went to contract labor for 720 okay so 720 plus 900 of this so what is that 900 plus 720 is 1620 should be on their 1099 not the hundred dollars okay because this equipment rental is not a 1099 account so let's see if that happens I'll go back to my, my little report here ports vendors 1099 summary there's Barney's and it's only the 1620 so that's perfect and just to make sure that you completely understand this the reason why that extra hundred dollars is not on there is because you're not supposed to put materials on a 1099 you're only supposed to put labor and the reason why quickbooks knew not to put the amount that went to materials to it is because let me move this back up a little bit is because equipment rental is omitted you see if I had put here that it goes to box 7 then it would have added it so you see how important it is that these accounts be identified as to whether or not they go on a 1099 by putting a box or omit it okay so hopefully I think that that works for you so that's really it those are the two main things you do you make sure that the vendors are pointed you make sure that the accounts are marked as 1099 eligible and then you can print 1099s and to do that we go to reports uh, actually no we don't go to reports we go to vendors we go to print e-file 1099s 1099 wizard and then you walk through the steps and again you can just use the wizard I just kind of wanted to show you how to do it manually but uh, you could simply go in here and check off who's supposed to get a 1099 and make sure the information is correct if not you can actually add or change it right here which is great rather than going into the vendor list manually uh, here's where you go to mark the accounts notice how you only see a couple of accounts here you want to start by clicking show all accounts and that'll give you all your accounts then you can pick and choose which accounts are 1099 eligible this is a little thing that shows you that which uh, items get excluded I don't know if you know this but anybody that you pay via a credit card automatically gets excluded also if you um, pay them by PayPal those numbers get excluded from their 1099 and the reason why is because if you pay them via a credit card the credit card company issues their own 1099 to that vendor and they shouldn't have to get doubled up you know in other words the payment that they got from the credit card company from you that's on a separate 1099 you only give them a 1099 for what you've paid them via check or something and QuickBooks takes care of that and that's what this little screen is kind of telling you Okay. this is just kind of letting you review and see what's going to be on the 1099 and then you can either print the 1099s or you can use an e-filing service this costs money this print 1099s you can certainly do you have to order the forms you can order them from Intuit I think you can just go get it at the store too in other words you can't print 1099s on blank sheets of paper and then when you're ready you can preview what the 1099 is going to look like you see how it's ready to go on a form that already has the boxes so you got to buy those forms already kind of pre-populated with the boxes and stuff and then you this stuff will fit right in line with it uh, and then when you're ready you just click print now what you do is you send one copy of the 1099 to them you keep a copy for yourself and then the third you send to the Internal Revenue Service with a cover sheet the cover sheet is called a 1096 and you can print that directly out of QuickBooks as well okay so that's just what I wanted to I'll go ahead and put my name in here so I can show you that you can do that as well here's a preview of what the 1096 looks like it's just a summary of all the 1099s okay so the only thing you really got to do is set it up order the forms and you're good to go and the last thing I'll show you is that in the online edition if you go to the vendors list you'll see prepare 1099 so you can do it in the online edition as well when you click it it's going to walk through a little um, a little 
step-by-step -step process for you, which is basically going to do the same thing. It's going to make sure your company information is right, make sure that the accounts have been pointed properly as 1099 eligible, make sure the vendors that are 1099 eligible are there, there's a review, and then a print. Okay, So I think that is it. Sorry this was a little bit long, but 1099s are really important. I hope I've helped you. If you have any questions, go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com and look us up. And good luck with your QuickBooks. And by the way, have a really good holiday. Catch you later.